What is up, heroes? It's Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtues Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, we were in the lounge, and we solved some pretty cool puzzles. However, I was running out of my recording time towards the end, so uh, we had to take a little bit of a pause, and now I'm back. We escaped from the room and are going to, I don't know, explore what comes afterwards. We got a map of Floor A, and possibly reunite with the others and see what they have to say. Again, this is one of the big three timeline branches. So I really expect a lot to be different, although knowing Zero Escape, you know, my expectations and predictions could be really just uh, out the window. So anyways, uh, Luna sa or Sigma says, Dunno, only one way to find out, though. Hey. Someone's coming. And who might that be? <laughs> Looks like Alice, Clover, Kay. Oh, everybody. And Dio, Quark, and Temyoji. Wow, she's really breathing heavy. And so is he. Why? What's going on here? We ran into them a little bit ago. Well, not literally, of course. I don't know, with a prow like that, I imagine you run into a lot of things. I don't I don't think I've ever actually heard the word prow before. Let me see the map. Oh, uh sure. Yeah, so this is the map just demonstrating how pretty much everybody escaped from their rooms and ended up in the same hallway and why we've all reunited here. Ah, I get it. All three routes end up here. That's the same as the map we found in the infirmary. Infirmary? Oh, we found a map like that too. So this is pretty interesting. We've just confirmed that K Clover... And um, Alice were in the infirmary this time around, which means we should have access to Excelivir. Okay, and then Quark says, oh, we found a map like that too. Ours was in the crew quarters. So Quark, Temyoji, and Dio went into the crew quarters, which means we should have access to the number three bomb. That's so. We found ours in the lounge. Hmm. Maybe we should sit down for a bit and exchange information. No. There's plenty of time for that after we check out this elevator. What the? This is just like the other floor. These doors have colors on them too. The one on the left is green. The one in the middle is blue. And the one on the right is red. Are these chromatic doors? It seems so, Quark. Look, there's a box here. It looks like the ones we saw earlier. Lock. Huh, I wonder if this is something that is so same... Yeah, it's so similar that we can't skip it for a while. Alright, looks like we don't have a choice then. We gotta head back. Quark, why don't you show him that note we found from the crew quarters? Sure. Oh? Did it say something like supplementary rules? Because if it did, we have one too. We found ours in the infirmary. Yeah, we found one too. It was in a safe in the lounge. Here are a few more rules for you. Once you've opened a door, you can hop through it as much as you like. The chromatic doors are like that too. Once you open them, yeah, so we already read this in the last episode. Um, 
But let's see what the other notes say for the sake of, I guess, refresher. If that's true, then we can all go back the way we came and get into the warehouse. I don't think Zero is saying we can. I think he's saying we have to. Otherwise, what's the point of that keycard? You mean this? The Ambidex room key. We found some too. That makes six then. One for each AB room. Let's head back to the warehouse. That's right. So when Zero says jump, we say how high, huh? I remember that exact line. So that's my cue to start skipping. So we go back through the lounge. And this is where we get to interact with Clover and Kay, who are experiencing it for the first time. So, this is the lounge. It would seem Zero's notes were telling the truth. Getting back here was easy enough. That means we could all go visit the infirmary, too. Or the crew quarters. It's kinda... That's kind of just like the game reassuring us like, yep, it's not like there are only a few people who could have been in the infirmary at a given time. Now, from any point on, anybody could have access to the infirmary. Hey, Grandpa, check this out. It's some of your favorite scotch. Hmm. Oh, why does Quark... <laughs> Temyoji is so passionate about his scotch that apparently even Quark is familiar with it. Tempting, but I don't really think now's the time. Whoa, hold on. Grandpa? Since when were they buddies? Or had they always been that close? In other words, they'd known each other before the Nonary game, and if Quark was calling Temioji Grandpa, maybe they were even related. Alice and Clover seemed to be close, too. Just how many of these people knew each other already? Let's go, buddy. As soon as we get out of here, I can drink all the scotch I want. I just had like a a really weird moment where I was thinking, okay, so if Alice and Clover are, you know, related, and Temyoji and Grandpa, or Temyoji and Quark are related, what about Luna, Dio, myself, and Kay? And I had this weird notion that maybe Kay is like a future Sigma? It, like... It's probably rooted in the in the idea that maybe Sigma's a robot, right, with the white blood sort of thing, and maybe K is just like futuristic robot that you know doesn't have any attempt to look like a human at all or or something like that. You know, chances of that being true are like 0.001% or anything. But it's kind of a weird idea I had. I wonder if anybody else ever you know speculated something like that. But anyways, Temyoji says, as soon as we get out of here, I can drink all the scotch I want. And you can drink all the root beer floats you can stomach. What? You're gonna get me a root beer float? But... Are, are you sure? Why is Quark so cautious about it? Is it a money concern from Temyoji, or is it a medical condition for Quark? There's the game answering my question. Do you have enough money? Oh, ye of little faith. I found an old factory full of rare earth metals the other day. What does he do? I do appreciate we're getting a little bit more characterization in this timeline of, you know, different characters. Little tidbits that add more to their personality, their backgrounds, that weren't evident the first time we played through. Alright, back to Warehouse A. Zero's yawning. Oh, you're finally done! You were taking so long I hopped off for a little nap. <laughs> oh, for yawning? Really? You're just a computer program. I remember this. 
So now they're explaining that we can basically play the AV game. Kay, Quark, and myself each gave one card to Luna, Alice, and Temyoji. Then we headed into the AV rooms. There wasn't really any discussion of who'd go into which door, and Fi and I found ourselves heading into the leftmost room. That's right, so we were with Fi and Luna. Looks like everybody else has gone in already. Think we should head in too? Why are you asking me? Just hurry up and get in there. Okay, okay. She's running the show. So our opponent is going to be Luna. We've seen in the other timeline that Luna chooses ally, knowing the Zero Escape games and Virtue's last reward from all the other decisions we've had to make. I would bet that if we choose ally, Luna is going to choose betray, and if we choose betray, Luna is going to choose ally, because the game just can't let us feel good about any decision we make. Forty-five minutes remain. What? This game's got a time limit too? Excuse me? What? Here I am thinking, okay, it's going to be the same usual rules, but... What? Who is that? It looks like an elderly woman. Since when is there a tenth person in this game? What? What? What the heck? Who is this? <laughs> like I know. Look, it doesn't matter who she is, just get everyone over here. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, we can't leave now, can we? Hey! Guys, guys, get over here! We found someone! There's a lady over here! She's unconscious. She kind of looks like maybe Luna, maybe an older Fi. I didn't wait for a response, just turned around and followed Fi into the room. We knelt down next to the woman and turned her over as gently as we could manage. Well, this is certainly a surprise, guys. <laughs> I did not expect this. All that greeted us was... What? Blood? Who is she? She's covered in blood. Who is she, why was she here, and why was she killed, and if so, by who, right? So many questions. I leaned down to listen at her mouth. Nothing, no breath. With shaking hands, I felt against her neck for a pulse. No movement, just cold skin. If she was killed... Where was she killed? Was she brought here after she was killed, or was she killed somewhere else? Ah, there's so many questions. What the heck were you yelling? What's going on here? Is she... Quark, don't look! Somebody get Quark out of here! Uh, okay! C come on, Quark! <clears throat> then she's... Yeah. She's not breathing. And I can't find a pulse. Her body's already cold, so I'm guessing she was... Guessing she was murdered a while ago. Murdered? Does this look like an accident or a suicide to you? Hmm. It looks like she was stabbed. Don't see a weapon around here, though. I'm trying to remember, where did we find a knife? I think we did at one point, didn't we? That means either the killer took it with them, or it was part of them. Part of them? Well, if someone was strong enough and they had metal hands, then they might be able to stab someone in the heart. <laughs> that, that line takes on such a whole different meaning after the timeline exploring Sigma's, you know, potentially robotic hand. What are you suggesting? Just the joke. Don't take it so seriously. Hmm. Whatever, if we examine the wound, we'll probably get a better idea of what the weapon was. Let's get her to the infirmary. She might be old, but she's still a woman. Something else is... Well, they've already activated the AV game, so they only have 45 minutes to handle this before they need to make their decisions. Which, this is the first time around? No, this is the second time around. Or no, no, it is the first time around. 
Yeah, because they haven't done any of the AB rounds earlier. Is that the case? Ah, oh, I don't remember. <laughs> no, I think they just went through their first chromatic doors. So they haven't done a proper AV game before. So they've, they're going to have a really steep learning curve with very little time. If we're going to do an autopsy, she should have some privacy. Come on, boys, let's go. D.O.K. and I gingerly lifted the woman up and carried her to the infirmary. Perhaps he just didn't consider himself one of the boys, or maybe it was something else. For whatever the reason, Temyoji only stared. His whole body was rigid, like a rope pulled almost to its breaking point. But it was his eyes that caught my attention. He wasn't staring at us, not quite. It was more like he was staring toward us, a smoldering spark of... something, burning silently behind his gaze. Huh? It wasn't until we were almost to the infirmary that I realized Temyoji hadn't spoken a single word since the moment we'd found the body. Does Temyoji recognize the woman? I turned to look back at him. He was following us at a distance, his breathing heavy and labored and his movements slow and shuffling, as if his body was suddenly made of lead. Huh, that's very interesting. I appreciate your observation, Sigma. Temyoji's wife? Quark's mother? I don't know, Quark's grandma or something? The old woman's body was surprisingly light. Carrying her felt almost like carrying an old dry piece of wood. <laughs> what an analogy, Sigma. Classy. We set her down carefully in the infirmary bed as if we were afraid she might break. Hmm. She looks so peaceful. I'm trying to see, is there anything... I mean, now that we can actually look at her... She has those sort of jewels around her neck and shoulder area, and a similar one on her, you know, right hand's ring finger. But it's not like her face or anything really lets on immediately what she might be. Almost like she's just going to wake up any minute now. Maybe she didn't suffer much when she died. Yeah, that's true. Given the infirmary and, and all that stuff, um, there's probably a decent chance that whoever killed her also had access to anesthetics and that sort of thing and could have put her out completely before killing her. Let's hope so. Anyway. I feel a little bad about doing this, but I think we need to examine her. You mean like an autopsy or something? I'm just going to have a look at the wound. If we had a coroner, then it'd be a different story, but... Um... This is where we finally find out about Luda's medical experience. What? I have a medical license. You're a nurse? No. You're a doctor? Well, I'm not exactly a coroner. What what are you? Interesting. I guess you really can't judge a book by its cover, can you? Sorry. You don't need to apologize. Yeah, it's not like you need to declare what you are. Are you really going to perform an autopsy? Oh, um... I won't be really be doing it. Oh, okay, so now they're gonna... Oh, okay, they're gonna talk about Adam. Uses nuclear magnetic resonance imaging to examine and diagnose people. Ah, yes, I remember. Oh, yeah? And just how the heck do you remember that? Because Alice Clover and I examined this entire room. So you think you can use it to perform some kind of autopsy? Yes. I think I should be able to manage that. Okay. Well, let's see what it has to say. Luna ran the scanner over the body, then turned back to the terminal. The display filled up with text, most of it rather technical. Sex female, estimated age 65 to 75 years, diagnosis deceased, 
Cause of death, exsanguination, so she bled out. Estimate time of death, three to four hours. Damage trajectory weapon entered through the fourth intercostal, piercing the heart. The wound, characteristics, clean, continuous, um, one angle, sharp, one blunt. Wound cavity of 150 millimeters, wound length of 30 millimeters, wound width of three millimeters. Based on the characteristics described above, there's a 95% chance the wound was caused by a sharp, single-bladed instrument. Like maybe a scalpel. Which is interesting. Where where was the scalpel? Uh, it was almost certainly in the infirmary, right? Huh. Yeah, I don't really get it. <laughs> What's it mean by instrument? Was she stabbed with a clarinet or something? Oh my god, Sigma. It means a tool of some sort. A knife, probably. In other words, she was stabbed in the heart, right? Yes. Well, I suppose that clears me of suspicion. Sorry, but no. Why? Please don't tell me you think my hand can somehow turn into a knife. I told you that was a joke. Then why am I still a suspect? I mean, I mean, just because your hands are metal doesn't mean that's your only means of potentially killing this lady. It's not like you couldn't have similarly grabbed a scalpel or a knife and stabbed her like literally everyone with normal human hands, right? But Fi's bringing up a good point, that the lady was found in the room that he and Clover jumped out of in the very beginning, right? We found the old lady in one of the AB rooms, specifically the one farthest to the left. Before we went in there, only two other people had been in that room. You and Clover. Only one of you was conscious. That's actually a really good point. I forgot about that um, Clover was unconscious when Kay, you know, jumped out. Fine, please, stop joking around. I assure you, there was no one else in that room besides Clover when I woke up. She must have been put there later. But the door was locked, right? I don't think anyone could have gotten in without the key. Perhaps, but yeah, that's actually a very valid point, Quark. Is there any way the AB gate could have opened? Unlikely. You would need an AB card, and it would announce that the AB game had started upon doing so. So it's unlikely that that was the case. The only other time they were open is when... is when Kay and Clover, you know, leapt out of it, right? So how could the body have gotten in there? That's a great question. And why is it there in this timeline, but not in others? There was a hatch on the ceiling, remember? Yes, there was. But Zero said he'd locked all the hatches. Well, if he was telling the truth, nobody could have gotten in there after you two left. Which means... You baka. Why'd you kill her, Kay? I knew it. You're him, aren't you? You're the real Zero. Yeah, that's pretty aggressive. Wait a minute, please. Just calm down. You aren't making sense. Let's suppose I am Zero. Why would I do something that would obviously cast suspicion on me? It's another very valid point. Uh, well, because... Because you figured we'd think that, and you would throw us off the trail by doing the exact opposite. <laughs> and this is when we get into the sort of, you know, logic, circular... That's not a logical argument. Still, you do have at least half a point. Your argument doesn't confirm my guilt. 
but it does show us where we should be looking, the real Zero. The person who brought us here is likely the person who murdered that woman. Doesn't that seem like the most reasonable answer? I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. If Zero was the murderer, then they could open anything they wanted to. I mean, didn't Zero say something about that? I live in the master computer. That means all the electronic doors in this whole war in are under my control. Exactly. Also, consider this, if the murderer isn't Zero... Why would the AI Zero stay silent? He told us that his job was to make sure the game ran smoothly. I will say though, making sure the game runs smoothly is a pretty nebulous phrase. Right? Because it implies there's some sort of purpose behind the, the Nonary game, and it may not be what's apparent to the participants, right? The purpose of the Nonary game could be something completely different from ensuring, you know, nobody dies. In fact, trying to get put people in a situation where they may kill each other could be the exact purpose of the Nonary game, right? And so, for all we know, it could be running particularly smoothly because there's been a murder. <laughs> But now the unexpected has happened, and he says nothing. Why would he do that? If he can see everything we do, then he must know who killed the old woman. So why has he kept his silence? The answer is simple. The murderer is Zero, or rather, Zero Senior, I suppose you could say. He likely ordered Zero Junior, the AI, to keep his identity hidden. If Zero Junior told us about the murderer, then Zero Senior's identity would be compromised. There is something else to consider as well. Perhaps this murder was not unexpected. Zero Senior murdered her. Just as planned, death is only another part of the game. Killing someone is just part of a game to him? Well, there's no way to know for sure, but I would assume so. I think that's a pretty fair assumption. Yep, and here's that reminder about the AV game. <laughs> I, this is what I was saying, guys. They're going to have a really tough time when they go to do their first AV game, and they only have, what, 10 minutes left? 10 minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. <clears throat> All players, please enter your votes. If no vote is recorded before the deadline is passed, any non-voting parties will automatically ally. <coughs> Whoa, what was that? I don't know. Well, one thing's for sure. And that is... If we don't go vote, <clears throat> something bad's going to happen. You see? Just as I said... Zero Junior ensures the game continues, even though someone has died. All of this is part of Zero Senior's plan. Let's get back to the warehouse. Yeah, that was very insightful from Kay. 
If we all head to the AV rooms, maybe we'll see Zero Junior. After all, he told us he'd give us specifics once we'd gone in. Wow, so that's quite the twist. <laughs> Already a huge difference in this timeline compared to the previous one, right? But yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense um, that Zero Senior would have been the one to kill. My only concern is maybe there's some other physics thing going on <laughs> where it's like, how could the body have gotten there? Right? Where was this person prior to the game or during the game? How do we not encounter them at all? I don't know, but we're really going in there? I kind of don't want to. I mean, there was a dead lady in there just a few minutes ago. Huh? Wait. Fi? Where'd you go? Up here. Up. Whoa! What the heck is she doing? That's right, she can uh, fly. She's probably inspecting the hatch. You must be really desperate to get high. Seriously? That's the best you can do? I was expecting something about how I jump at the first sign of trouble. <laughs> Whatever. What are you up to up here anyway? Everybody's already gone in the AB rooms. Yeah. Well, there was something I wanted to check out. And that is this thing. Remember it? The hatch? Try opening it. No luck. It won't budge. Hmm. Then that means this AB room is locked down tight. No one could get in. You're talking about whoever killed that old lady, aren't you? Yeah. You still think it's K, huh? Well, like Clover said, I... So Sigma's misinterpreting. If I didn't say it's likely K, or that she thinks it's K, it's that K can't be cleared of suspicion, right? If Zero Senior is the killer, then it wouldn't matter if we could open this hatch or not. I know. I just wanted to be sure. Which is a valid thing to do. You know, check for yourself. Um, in a game where somebody potentially died, right, at the hands of one of the other participants, it's worthwhile to not trust everything everybody else says at face value. Five minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. Let's go. Yeah, they've got a lot to figure out. I imagine Algernon's waiting for us. Wow, that's a throwback. I read, um... Flowers for Algernon, like, when I was in 7th grade or something? Wow. <laughs> uh, he's a rabbit. Yeah, I know, more more rabbit or bunny references, jokes, etc. Although, oh, wasn't Algernon... Miro. A mouse? Maybe? Anyways, look. There's something on the screen. Yeah, you're right. So, here's the Ambidex game. I wonder how much of an explanation in Real Dive we're gonna get into the prisoner's dilemma, given we only have five minutes, right? The first timeline, we spent like a good half hour, 40 minutes of in-game time talking about the prisoner's dilemma. Well, looks like there's no going back now. Astute observation. I wonder if we can skip. Nope. Hooray, everybody's finally here. I've been waiting. So have we. We've got some questions for you, Zero. Who was that old lady who... <laughs> Will all of you please stop bombarding me with questions? All? The other people in the other rooms are asking me stuff just like you are, Sigma-kun. I guess you probably can't hear them since these rooms are completely soundproof, but Zero's hearing all of them. Dio is especially loud. For real, Dio, I need you to shut up. There isn't much time. I've got to hurry and explain all this stuff for the game will end before I'm done. Yeah, he's got a point. So, no more questions from now on. No answers for anybody, okay? You'll just have to wait. Now, let's get this party started. 
Should we skip this? Yeah. Okay. So, explaining the rules of the game. However, now because we chose things differently, the example that Zero gives is different. For example, Sigma Kun and Phi Kun paired up with Luna and went through the Magenta door, didn't they? That means that Sigma and Phi will be playing against Luna. And it goes the other way too. Luna's opponent will be Sigma and Phi. Obviously that means Potassium. <laughs> That's so funny. K and Clover's enemy will be Alice. And Dio and Quark's enemy will be Tamiyoji. I guess the enemy isn't really the right word, is it? Okay, so at this point we can skip again. And we get this whole explanation that we skip through. Lovely. Okay then. I think that about does it for the basic rules. I'm really curious to see how Phi is going to handle this with only 5 minutes. Because again, we did that really deep dive into the Prisoner's Dilemma before, but... Well, actually, there's a little bit more, but... That doesn't have to wait, I guess. After all, it's almost time. Hey! Wait! No. <laughs> I won't wait and I can't wait. Didn't you hear me? It is time. One minute remains until Ambidex game polling closes. You see, it's time for me to be hopping on out of here. See you later. Have a nice trouble. Have a nice trouble. <laughs> we don't have time to talk about this. Choose Betray. What? You're kidding. You really want me to betray Luna? We don't know if she'll ally or not. We choose ally and she chooses Betray, we're screwed. That's a loss of two points. You tell me, Sigma. What's three minus two? What kind of idiot do you think I am? It's one, obviously. Exactly. If our BP gets down to one, it's over. So... Wait, what do you mean by it's over? Thirty seconds remain until Ambidex game polling closes. Just press the darn button. You're hiding something. Yeah, you've been suspicious from the get-go. I mean, how'd you know my name? Or how about when we found that old lady's body? You didn't even blink. Almost like you knew she would be here. Look, I don't want to believe it, but did you... are you... Interesting. So has Phi already been through this? So this is really interesting, right? Because we've been through other timelines, we know that Phi is also going through other timelines. And now because we know that Phi has been through other timelines and those experiences, and we have not been through this timeline before, but she is letting on, um, unintentionally or not, that she has, based on her, you know, just not even blinking at the old lady dying, etc. Her, you know, asserting that we should choose Betray and claiming that it's all over if we get to one, has she been through this timeline before and then is coming back to the past to try to change things, right? I would almost argue that that's certainly the case and why she's telling us to choose Betray so adamantly. Because if we choose Ally, we're probably gonna end up on a bad route that's gonna, you know, turn out not so hot. But, look, I don't want to believe it, but did you, are you? Fine. If you won't do it, then I... Don't think so. I'm not gonna move until you give me some answers. If I don't do anything, it'll just vote ally for us anyway. So let's hear it. What are you hiding? What's it's over supposed to mean? Ten seconds remain. <laughs> this is not good. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two. When your BP hits zero, you die. That's what I meant. One. Ally! We choose ally! We ally for Luna! <laughs> we ally for Luna! Whew. I didn't want to like take a minute and really think through that there, because I feel like the game puts you in a situation where you're supposed to kind of instinctively, reactively choose, and I was still feeling ally at that time period, but but it is worth thinking about now, I guess, that we've made our sort of instinctive, uh, reactive decision. Do we trust Phi? You know, Sigma in this timeline isn't aware of all the timeline shenanigans going on, but we as the player are, 
and Phi maybe is in this timeline before we even realize it. Or maybe she's having premonitions and doesn't know why, you know, she feels the way she does so strongly. But but we know there is some sort of connection here. And so do we as the player trust Phi and her, you know, assertion that we choose Betray? I don't know. From I mean, Ally has been the only choice that Luna's chosen in every <laughs> AV game that we've experienced, in all the timelines we've experienced. Again, knowing Zero Escape, I wouldn't be surprised if they they really toyed with that. Especially for players that have seen Luna be this incredibly gentle, uh, cooperative character in all the other timelines. I don't know. I guess still the optimist in me wants to choose Ally first, especially with a character like Luna. I, I have less apprehension about doing so. But at the same time, from those other timelines, I want to trust Phi. And so that's really the tension I'm experiencing in this decision here. Results will be displayed in the warehouse. Thank you for your participation. Ambidex gates now opening. As Fi and I stepped out of the AB room, I could see the others running toward the monitor, shoving and pushing to get closer. Temyoji was left behind, his footsteps a slow, heavy plod. Clearly still bothered by everything going on with the lady. What had happened to make him like that? Sigma. What was that, Sigma? <clears throat> huh? Don't play dumb. You chose ally. Didn't you hear me? I told you that if your BP drops to zero, you die. Yeah, I heard you. A whole second before the deadline. How can you expect me to think anything through that quick? It would have taken like half a second just to process what you'd said. No, you could have done it. The brain's processing power increases during a crisis, so this is going to be laying the foundation for the morphogenetic field theory and probably the purpose of the Nonary game, much like 999. It starts working so fast that a second can seem like an eternity. Your brain was doing that right before time ran out, wasn't it? Well, am I wrong? What the heck are you talking about? Okay, fine. Let's be generous and say, hypothetically, that you're right about this crisis overclocking thing. How would you know whether or not my brain was doing that? Did you crack open my skull while I wasn't looking? You just wedge a microscope in there and have a look at my neurons? <laughs> Let me be straight with you. Your... your... <laughs> your crap is whack. Like, hella whack. I mean, do you just know stuff you shouldn't? Stuff like my name or how if your BP hits zero you die? You told me you don't know why, but more and more I'm starting to think you've been lying to me. Yo, what's up? Sigma Coon! Sigma Coon! Hey, what are you kids doing over there? We're about to announce the results. Let's go. In the next episode, oh, I, I didn't even want to build that one up. I just wanted that one to hit because I am really eager to see what happens in this result as well. And I know I need to, to, you know, trail you guys on along too, so <laughs> sorry if you hate me. But yeah, I'm going to take a quick break here, grab some food, and really think through this and try to understand, you know, do I decide to trust Phi? I mean, I've already decided in one aspect. Do I trust Phi in this timeline? Or do I trust my perceptions of the characters, you know, from other timelines? How different can they be, right? We've already seen how different a timeline can be on just a very fundamental level. There's a dead person so early in this timeline that we didn't even see exist at all in the other timelines. So there's really a, you know, a high ceiling for how different these timelines can be. And I'm not sure how things are going to change. For all we know, Luna could be, you know, a psychotic maniac in this timeline and is dead set on choosing Betray every single AB game. But we just have no idea. And I, I'm super curious to see how this AV game results, and I hope you guys are looking forward to those results just as much as I am. But until the next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.